So we can measure permeability in a number of different ways. One way is to take a sample of soil, uh, take it to the lab and do a test where we, we pass uh, water through it, a bit like um, the apparatus that was in the cartoon of the previous video. Um, but when we take soils out of the, um, uh, out of the ground, uh, sometimes we can disturb them. So a, a useful method for determining permeability is to do it in situ through something called a pump test. Now, to do a pump test, um, there's two uh, situations uh, that we do a pump test on, on a confined aquifer and an unconfined aquifer. Well, let's look at the confined aquifer first. Um, we might have a situation like this where there's a, um, an, a confined aquifer where the material above and below it um, are impermeable. So any water movement within this uh, system is going to happen within the, the, con the, the aquifer, within this material. Now, to do a pump test, what we first do is... Um, drill a hole, um, and then let the waters uh, re recalibrate. So we now have a, a water in the hole that goes up to here. So in a pump test, we what we do is we pump water out of the hole. So we remove water out of the hole until a new water level is reached. So we, we now have a new water level. Um, and in a confined aquifer situ situation, this water level must be above the top of the aquifer. What will happen in this situation is that um, we have a driving force where we have a higher water um, level over here and a low water level over here. So water will move through the confined aquifer. And um, a steady state will be achieved over time where the, the water level will probably end up looking something like this. Now what we need to do is get the water level at a number of different points away from the, um, the, the pumping well. So we drill observational uh, holes and we measure the water height in each of these observational holes. So these observational holes will be a known distance away from the pumping well. Um, and we call that the radius. So if you think about it, if you imagine the, um, the water table around the pumping well, so this is in three dimensions, we might have a pumping well. Um, and if we go uh, far enough away from the, um, the, the pumping well, we'll have uh, water tables that were equivalent to what they were before we started our pumping test. So they might be up here. Um, and that would be in a radius or a circle around the, the pumping well. We'd have the, the ambient uh, water table. Um, but in the water, water uh, pumping well, the water table would be a lot lower. So if we measured the, um, the water table or if we could picture the water table around the pumping well, it would look something like this. So um, that's why we use R. It's the radius away from the, the pumping well. So if we're think, starting to think about Darcy's law again, remember Darcy's law is Q equals uh, A times K times hydraulic gradient. What we're trying to understand is what the, or what we're doing this test for is to try and understand the permeability. So we need to figure out what the other parameters are within this, this equation. Well, the, um, the area, the flow area, is really just the, um, the depth of the, the confined aquifer. So that's the, the depth that the water's flowing through. And then multiplied by the area, now the area is equivalent to the circumference of this circle multiplied by the, um, the depth. So the circumference of the circle is 2 pi r and, the, um, and the, the, the depth is d. So the area is equal to 2 pi r d. So that goes into Darcy's law here. So we have q equals 2 pi r d 
times k times i. So the hydraulic gradient, or the i value, is um, related to the drawdown, so the amount of um, uh, the, the change in water level uh, between its original position in, the, in, the, in the, the pumping well and the position that we've taken it to. So this is called the drawdown. So there isn't a, a linear relationship between um, where the, the water table is over here and where um, it is in the, in, the, in the pumping well. That's not necessarily a linear gradient. So we can't just take the drawdown and divide it by O. What we need to do is plot a graph um, of the drawdown in each one of these um, observational wells as well. And we plot that graph, drawdown, against the log, or natural log of R. And then we'll get a straight line. So the slope of this line is actually equal to the flow divided by the 2 pi d multiplied by the permeability. So now we have an equation that we can rearrange to find k. So everything else we can, we can work out from the pump test. Um, so k is equal to q. And we know q because we, uh, we, we um, pump out a, a rate of water. Or we know the rate of water that we're, we're pumping out of the hole. Um, divided by 2 pi d. And we know d because it's the thickness of the, the aquifer, multiplied by s, which we find from this graph through our observational world. So we have an equation now where we can get k from a confined aquifer. So things are a little bit more complicated in an unconfined aquifer. But the principles and the setup are the same as a confined aquifer. So we have to set up a, um, a pumping hole uh, along with um, uh, a few observational holes that are of known distance away from the pumping hole. So it looks something like this. So an unconfined aquifer pump test might look something like this, where we have our pumping well, um, and we have our two our observation wells. Um, but you can see that the flow area changes. So unlike a, a confined aquifer, in an unconfined aquifer, the flow area changes. So it's um, a little bit more complicated to uh, to calculate the permeability. But this is how it's done. So if you take the, um, so if you know the, the total height um, or the total head that existed before the pump test started, and that's called H. And if you take the uh, head at each of these um, observation points, so at, at this point and at this point, and at this point, and you now plotted a graph um, of h squared minus h squared, or big H squared minus little h squared, um, for the, uh, um, the observational points. Um, a known radius away from the, uh, the pumping hole, you'll get a, uh, a straight line. And the slope of that straight line is equal to Q over pi times the permeability. So we now got an equation, uh, again, simple principles to the confined aquifer. We can rearrange to find the, um, the permeability. So the permeability would equal um, the flow divided by So the permeability would be equal to the flow divided by the, um, the pi times the, um, the slope of this graph. 